that break I was reflecting and it's like, wow. Um, <laughs> this is like what we're trying to tackle here, where it was, where it is now, where it's going. It's like, that's almost like three of these. What I want to try and focus on in this part, this last just under an hour, um, is solutions. But I did leave you with a question. We went to the break. And the question was, do artists lack professionalism and, and being proactive? Does this inhibit the sector from moving forward? Um, I do feel, though, there is a responsibility for us when we do have those actions of unprofessional to take the time out. Sometimes it's just naivety. They don't know. They don't. You're not, you've never been in this situation before. I get it. Some of it is def definitely common sense. However, if it's something that they, they really don't, it's take that time and say, listen, let me, let me talk to you for a minute. Let me, let me just show you how, if you want to then keep going. But we don't take that time. I know for me, um, dancing was, we dance. And I know I've done a lot of unprofessional things, but it wasn't purposely or because I didn't want to. It was naive, just ignorance, didn't know. And nobody still, took, I had to learn the hard way for many years, and still, sometimes I still don't get it. <laughs> but nobody's sat me down and gone, see, can't go on that way, or see, try it this way to X, Y, and Z. I've had to learn it on my own back, which is not a problem, it's done, and I'm all better for it. However, I know for a fact that there's people here that I've pulled aside and not been like, I need to talk to you but just showing them X, Y, and Z, give them other options of how they can deal with certain situations and check the reaction of those other people and what it's doing to your, your community that you're in. Because it doesn't, you know, like lateness. I was all, at the beginning, it wasn't, I purposely wanted to be late, it's just timing or whatever, but it affects everybody in that company. And I used to think, what's the big deal? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm here, I'm gonna do my work. However, no, you, but nobody, showed me that. I had to then take the initiative and go, oh, it doesn't just affect the fact that I'm late. It affects that person and the person that's coming to... So all I'm saying is, with that, just we do still need to help each other. And once in a while, if you feel it's like, right, they really don't get it, put them aside or just talk to them. Don't have to embarrass them, but educate them so we can move forward productively onto the next thing. Otherwise, we'll be going back again, wasting time on that energy because that person is unprofessional. So, so on the theme of moving forward and solutions, let's try and shift towards that area. <clears throat> um, try and recall all the things we talked about in the first half. Um, some of the notes I made, <coughs> uh, some things that stuck out for me were rules, uh, communication from elders, um, getting your work out there, um, something about leadership, um, also, something came up about maybe not necessarily looking in dance to be in, looking outside of dance and other practices and other things that's going on to take us forward. So, is there anyone who's got, uh, like, wants to put their hand up or contribute um, a solution that's going to maybe move us forward? For instance, um, what are the solutions for learning the rules of theatre, for example? Has anyone got any thoughts on that? What are the solutions for increasing the communication from my elders? Has someone got a, a, a point on that? Has someone got a point on maybe international solutions? And I'll throw in there, but if we all go desperately internationally, what happens to the UK sector? I don't know. So, who would like to kick it off? Everyone's hands up. Go on, where do I start? Let's start with a panel member. I'm going to try and go panel to audience, panel to audience, so it's ba uh, balanced. You say solutions, but I think the solutions are already there, or is a lot in place. Okay. Open art surgery breaking convention, which will teach you your artist methods of making theatre. Same with what artists for artists is doing, with what Cindy's done. So, mm -hmm. saying the solution on that level says there's a problem when I see a lot of growth and a lot of people making work, which has been facilitated by Jonesy and many other people. And if you talk about from the beginning, I think it's shown its productivity and its ability to produce. With Kenrick and it keeps on happening. And again, I don't think the artists are the problem. I think that what we can do is, is um, coming back to that base level of every artist. We're in a room right now full of artists, okay? So if we're all intent on elevating and growing, then we need to help one another. 
if that is not, if you don't have a dance house to support, then help each other's vision. Um, and I think that can't be overlooked. Um, and it has to be something that you're willing to invest in if you want to see people invest in you. That if you look at what has worked, yeah, in my vision, I look at John Z, Kenrick, you know, all around the room, you have people that worked really hard and they made something that people wanted to see. And then they made choices about how they marketed that work so that people could get to it. Yeah. When you support excellence, which is what I think is the advantage that a lot of other genres have, they have structures which support excellence within what they're doing. So the Royal Ballet can go and do ballet as much as they want, and no one's going to say, how much are you doing in the community? They'll have a section for working in the community, but no one will question them. So why is it that when we're talking about funding for the people around the room, the first question becomes, what is your responsibility? Why aren't we funding our innovators and our entrepreneurs in order to go out there and do amazing work, grow audiences, and make choices that are going to inspire the next generation? Now, there is going to be all the Blairites. There is going to be all of this political stuff that's going on. There are gatekeepers. But the only way we move past those people is actually to take responsibility ourselves rather than pointing out where they all live. Because we've been pointing out where they all live for about the past 20 years. I've come away from dance, and I've come back in today, you know, because I just wanted to see what was going on. And it's like, I've been working in the belly of the beast. I've been working in one of the biggest companies in the world. And what they celebrate is leadership. They, they celebrate nothing else. They work on a very simple model, leadership. They don't talk about what your competitors are doing. They don't talk about who's trying to get in your way. They don't talk about any of these things. They talk about leadership and advocacy. If I'm going to lead you, then I have to be believable and authentic. And the way that I'm believable and authentic is that I get results. Mm -hmm. So the point being is in this room, we have to start celebrating those people that are getting results and supporting those people that are finding it hard to get those results. To politics, I can not give a stuff about it. I think, honestly, I, think I, I honestly naive to say, because you're involved in politics, the fact that you have water in your house Gas, you pay yeah, but that's you that's not going to be part of the creative process that's going on here. Okay, <clears throat> okay. Um, obviously, having that money, having your own resources, is really important. But I think if we're still thinking that there's this aspiration to get on a theatre, on a theatre stage to show our work, look at the companies like Punch Drunk. They don't go into a theatre. Yeah, there's all these companies where you can have a massive impact in the community that's not in a theatre. Go and walk along your high street. How many empty shops do you see? There's a theatre right there. Yeah, there's a theatre on every high street where you can be in, and if you've got the money and the resources, you've got empty warehouses all <coughs> over the place. If you go in and say, right, this is too big for me to take on, it's not big for you, not too big for you and 20 other people to take on, is it? Like years ago, in, when the contemporary scene started, there was lots of companies, like Chisholm Hale Dance Space, it started from independent artists. Mm -hmm. There's lots of independent artists, 20 pound, 20 pound a month, 20 pound a week. Yeah, you might, might be able to afford it, you might not be able to. But think about the space where you're presenting your work. It doesn't have to be in a theatre to get that credibility. So don't always think, oh, I've got to be on a theatre stage, I've got to be in the biggest house. No. Hip hop didn't really start in a theatre, did it? No. It started on the street selling, you know, you, you'd sell your CDs out, out, out of a cop, cop, you know, a trunk. Get back to the street to find the people where your audience is, rather than thinking, OK, I've got to go to this theatre. And actually, their mailing list is not the people that I want to connect with. Because that's all they'll do. They'll go to their mailing list to try and get an audience <coughs> for them. You've got to go out to get the people on that, uh, in, in those spaces. So, Carl, I know you had a point. Um, but I want to move it to, because I know this lady is prepped and ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ken mentioned something about get your production ready to go international. Now I'm going to come back to Vicky, if Vicky's frustration of wanting to support. So maybe I might have a question stroke suggestion. Um, what is it about maybe taking your work international? But then on the downside of that, does that mean then we are neglecting the UK scene, the sector? I don't know. But I know Cindy's got a lot to say on kind of international, so mm. over to you. Okay, so um, for those that don't know me, um, I am from Belgium, but I've been in the UK for 12 years. Uh, I also have done a lot of international exchanges, worked abroad, performed abroad, choreographed abroad, and I've set up an international exchange called A Thousand Pieces Puzzle, which is basically a training platform for choreographers, 
to gain business skills, artistic skills, and collaborate with peers abroad. So, um, the why I was saying in the beginning, you know, let's look at internationalism, is because me as an artist, I have built a portfolio for myself that is local and international. I have built a portfolio of opportunities, commissions, uh, you know, being paid abroad for my work, doing exchanges, and that actually gave me some credit, uh, you know, experience that I th then could bring back to the UK. So for me, it's like a cycle that goes like that with international, like making it global and then kind of making it local rather than the other way around. Um, so one, some of the things, oh yeah, the why I create work as well is I believe that I'm a citizen of the world, AKA an artist of the world. When I create work, it's very political. I want to create the communities I live in, but I want to have an impact internationally with my work, you know, with the message that is behind it, with, you know, the platforms that I'm creating and so forth. And sometimes I feel, you know, life has a bit of waves and how we are funded has waves. And I'm going to give you two examples. You know, when you said, you know, what if we make it internationally, what happens to the UK? I'm going to give you two examples of countries where people had to make it abroad first before being recognized. Hmm. One of them is Jamaica. So I'm a dance hall practitioner. I've done a lot of research on, on dance hall. I do dance hall theater. So local dance hall dancers in Jamaica have never been recognized. It's always been like, you know, that art form that was like, what is this? It's dirty. It's nobody paid attention to it in Jamaica. Dancehall had to go international. Russia had to go crazy about dancehall. Japan had to go crazy about dancehall. Europe had to go crazy about dancehall. Dancehall dancers started to travel and teach. And all of a sudden now, there is a whole phenomenon around dancehall that is a business and people can travel, which is a big deal when you have a Jamaican passport. And guess what's happening now locally? All of a sudden, locally in Jamaica and businesses and the government is like, ooh, there is potential in dance hall. We need to support the sector. In Belgium, where I'm from, is the same thing. Like, nobody pays attention to the hip hop dancers. Nobody paid attention to, you know, everybody knows Tintin, right? Tintin, you know? Nobody paid attention to it. They all had to go abroad, make it abroad, and then all of a sudden, ooh, they're from Belgium. They're from where, you know? But they were not supported. And it's the same thing. Now hip-hop comedians, stand-up comedians, uh, people that draw comic books, uh, hip-hop theater artists, we had to make it abroad. For now in Belgium, the government is saying, ooh, we need to support them. So why can we not do it in the UK? We've been supported a little bit sometimes, and then maybe we're in a dip. But internationally, there are opportunities. When I talk about international, and that's why I want to go to the term hip hop theater. You know, where does hip hop theater come from and so forth? Every country has their own you know, pioneers or history. <coughs> the word hip hop theater is not used internationally. You know, that's a bit of a, uh, you know, an English culture trying to think that the whole world thinks the same or you know, looks at art the same, no. Hip-hop theater, the word hip-hop theater, when I go in Belgium and I say, you can't translate it, and they use, you know, we need to make up a word for it. Dutch, Flemish-speaking Belgium, we don't use the word hip-hop theater. I'm going to go and teach in Portugal soon, I've been teaching in Germany, I've been, you know, teaching in Venezuela. They don't use the word hip-hop theater. If you want to create opportunities internationally, you also need to kind of, you know, start looking at what are the terminologies that people are using? You know, do they use the word hip hop theater? Do they even use the word professional development? For me, moving here, I discovered the word professional development for artists. <laughs> if I go back to Belgium, it's still alien to them. It doesn't exist. Does that make sense? But there are opportunities. Again, I've created an, you know, a, a portfolio of work and credits. In the UK, like I know that I have created stuff that I'm proud of, but I've never accessed the fundings and the resources that I really wanted. So what have I done? I went outside of the UK and I got European fundings. And European fundings actually, you know, like supported my 1000 pieces puzzle program. Yes, there was, you know, a little bit of UK money and yes, there was a bit of Belgian money, but internationally there are also resources. People that have done my 1000 pieces puzzle program, so they've especially collaborated with uh, so the, it's 15, no, 30 choreographers now of the UK that have participated <coughs> to my programs. They've done exchanges with, exchanges with Belgian choreographers. Now they are traveling to Belgium all the time because they get commissions and opportunities to do some R&D. 
And I'm not saying that they're gonna go and move abroad. They're gonna go and get some experience, maybe even build their credits there, because at the moment there is not much happening for them. And I think it's like a cycle, you know, like where, where. Then that's what I'm saying. We cannot look at, you know, the UK as being, yeah, just an island. And then afterwards, again, then there is the, you know, there is the funding part, and then there is the business part. So I've personally been investing a lot in myself as a businesswoman and entrepreneur because I was like shying away from that word for a very long time because I was like, no, I'm an artist. It's not for me. And I've looked at, you know, I've really invested in myself. I've have, I have coaches. I'm surrounded by business coaches now. So out of my 1,000 pieces puzzle program, I have created Totally Driven. Totally Driven is now an online program where people can start to, and dance artists can understand about how to apply for fundings, how to think more, you know, business-wise. It's an online program, and again, I've got people from Taiwan that are on my program. I've got people from Washington, D.C. that are on my program. And so again, it's, you know, my, my work as an artist in the U.K., I have a local impact, but as well a global impact. And my, my portfolio is N local and international, and I think that's maybe a solution. I'm not saying it's the solution, mm -hmm. it's a solution that we can explore. A few things, which is um, jumping off the responsibility thing, is that the venues, like all venues, and the amount of venues that there are in UK and um, especially London here, all their objectives are to support us as artists as well. It's their responsibility as much as it is also ours. They have objectives, they have strands, they have funding for that. So I think researching, doing your own research to see what is available and out there in terms of um, when they do call outs. You know, that's how I first ever got my first opportunity to say in 2010. That's one thing. The second thing is um, communication. I, I'd say like mentorship, learn from people who have done things or just be open. And I think don't underestimate the power of co collaboration. There's so many of us uh, who have skills. <coughs> we, we deal with a different currency. What we have is a different currency because we have a skill set across the board of different things, photography, videography, producers, artists, you can exchange and create amazing things without any money and collaborate and from that then you can get um, produce something of a really high quality that can show an example of what your work is as well. <coughs> this in itself is amazing. Lee, I know you're going to say this in any way, but Lee, Joseph and Emily, like, art well, is in itself is amazing. When I was coming up we didn't have anything like this so obviously I learned a lot from Ken, learned a lot from Hakeem, from Kate, from everyone who I've danced for in terms of hip hop VR, in terms of hip hop, in terms of professionalism, in terms of all these different things, how to conduct myself. Um, but this, as an organization of artists coming together, this doesn't happen that often, even in other um, dance styles, I believe, like contemporary and jazz. You don't see a lot of jazz dancers just sitting in the room clicking. But <laughs> <laughs> we have a community, and because it is hip hop, and because hip hop is about community, like we're growing. There's organizations here, there's universities here, there's legends. There's legends here, like there's people who are here who we can talk to, we can converse with, to actually grow. So I know it like kind of goes up and down because sometimes, sometimes I felt a bit down after the last um, talk we had. But I just want to say that with like us being here, like this is a positive. Don't look at it as a negative. Like this, this is already taking hip hop theater like to where it's going. We're already there. Like we're going. We're on our way to the pearly gates. Like we're up there. We're, we're moving forwards. So yeah, that's my thing. I'm positive. It's, Good man. Thank you. Carry <laughs> <laughs> um, I think there was there there is further conversation that needs to be had. I don't think we have actually um, we've had conversation today. Uh, that's what I believe. No, I think there are still more that needs to be looked at in depth. So I yeah. think we did do a kind of an umbrella feel today, which. I don't know whether it was um, good for you guys to hear, but one thing I would say that this is not Bible, this is an application. You as an individual, take it as you want. So with this conversation, take it as you want. It is not Bible. When I stepped away from the dance world, it was an interesting time. You know, I'd gone through a career whereby I was told at the very beginning of it that we were going to work a lot more in communities and that we were going to work around Tony Blair's model of community inclusion and society being something that the arts could help and heal with. And this is the outcome. We have a room full of people that are inspired by dancers that have come, you know, from all over the, the whole spectrum. <coughs> 
yet we have a lack of advocacy. And that's not to say that universities and the arts organisations aren't doing their bit. I think you need, you know, and it's been said a couple of times, you need entrepreneurs. You need people who are going to take advantage of what's out there. I danced for about 10 years, and probably a lot of you won't know what I did because I kind of stepped away for so long. But I danced for so many years and I got nowhere because I kept on knocking on doors and asking for something. And no one was ever going to give it to me. And it took one of my mates to say to me, do you know what, do you have an 18 year plan? And I was like, no, I've got a three month plan. Well then, what are you doing with a three month plan? Three month plan gets you nowhere, you're going to make your peace and no one's going to look at it after that. Once I, once I widened my perspective, once I started looking at what I was doing and taking responsibility for the things that I needed to take responsibility for, it's pointless blaming the government, it's pointless blaming an arts organisation. If you're doing the right things, they will respond to you. Now, when I first started dancing, the, Teresa Noble was the woman in the room. She was an amazing teacher. But she said, there's a hundred people in this room and only three of you will be dancers. That's a real thing. And I think in this room sometimes we, we put it out of our heads. So ask yourself this question. If you're not one of those dancers, are you a producer? Are you someone that's going to help out in kind? Are you someone that's going to learn a new skill so that you can help someone else who's doing the thing that you love? You know, because there's lots of ways into this industry. There's loads of different ways. You know, and having stepped away and come back in, what I'm amazed by is the amount of innovation and energy and, you know, love for it. But don't, don't, don't get into a tight spiral with this thing. Don't circle yourself worrying about whether you're going to get funding or whether anyone cares. Or, I don't care. Because if you're sitting there having that conversation, I don't care about you. If you're, and that's not to say that I don't care about you as a human being. I really do cherish you. But at the same time, no problem with this. But at the same time, the point is, is that I don't care about that person sitting in their room because I'm not going to see them. I'm going to see a person that inspires themselves and cares enough about what they're doing to get out there and actually do something. And you know, like this guy, when I saw him when I was in here, when I was working where I was working, it was interesting because I was like, hold on, this guy's like doing something amazing and he can't get into this building. I'm going to fight for that. If you're not fighting for yourself or for someone, then don't, don't, don't bore me with, with this is not working out because it won't. Pull yourself up, get out there, put yourself out there. We get into studios, we work with people, stuff happens. If you're moaning, nothing will happen for you. And that's not to say that your energy is not right. We just need to recalibrate. We need to look at that. Yeah, I think there is a bit of a, sorry to push on. I think there is a bit of a problem with advocacy because it's great when, you know, you can go and get recognition and you fit, a, you tick a lot of boxes for people. And a lot of people don't tick those boxes, but still want to get ahead. Yep, and if you're not ticking those boxes and you want to get ahead, then you've got, to, you've got to rip up that piece of paper, throw it away and make another piece of paper with ticks that apply to you and make them recognise what you're doing. You know, use the internet, use these things. It wasn't, you know, I wasn't born in the black and white days, but it wasn't there when I was, when I was your age, when, when you're doing what you're doing. Self-publishing was not a concept. You needed someone to actually, you know, get behind you. You can self-publish on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. I've seen this whole thing I've been watching on Instagram. It's been amazing. You know, I've been watching it happen on Instagram. I'm like, oh, look at all this modern stuff, you know? But the point being, it inspired me again. And then when I came in there to talk today, we had to watch a video. It was on Instagram. Get out there, do these things. You can do them. But don't moan. Because I won't listen, you know? Okay, I'll leave people with two quotes. Um, the first one we talked about responsibility and if NPO organization has responsibilities and I believe that we all have a responsibility. We have responsibility to educate ourselves, to educate others, to inspire, to take the industry and you know, the movement forwards. Whatever level you at, whether you are you know, at the beginning of your career or you know, you're already advanced, I think we all have a responsibility. So I'm gonna give you the quote of the Dalai Lama that says, if you think if you think you are too small to make a difference, try and sleep with a mosquito. <laughs> and then the second uh, quote I'm going to leave you with is something that, is, that I say to myself all the time. is in the face of every challenge now that you're going to encounter on the way, remember that difficult does not mean impossible. Um. 
I don't, don't want to cut the applause. <laughs> Sorry. Um, it happened. We have to really okay. move these right. as well. One so, minute. So do, one minute now. So well, now we've got one minute. They take a month. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's always the minute. You should have sat this side. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm thinking about um, it. Just, just what, what um, Curtis was saying. There's a... Go, take up from what Curtis was saying. There's a, there's a guy called Les Brown. He's a motivational speaker. He's got a great quote. And he says... Eighty. If you've got a problem, eighty percent don't care if the people you kept tell don't care, and twenty percent are glad it's you. <laughs> <laughs> so get you know the, the thing is don't don't cr don't cry about the the situation. Do something about it. And if you're fr afraid to fail, then you ain't going to get anywhere. Mm -hmm. You've got to fail, 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 and keep failing. It's like a b boy, Jamie. How many times you fail to do a, to get a new move? <laughs> Countless. Countless. You fail and fail and fail. Gamers fail and fail and fail. But their motivation to get to the next level is their why. And if you ain't got a why of where you where, where you want to go, you ain't gonna get anywhere. You have got to have that why. It's a great talk by a guy called Simon Sinek. Yeah. Online, and he, he talks about having your why first. So I'm gonna just make a couple of things. Um, these are, debates are great. I really you know they're really inspiring. But the thing that really great to me when we leave these debates they just stay debates mm -hmm. there's no action plan mm -hmm. yeah so I've got two things to say to say to you what can you do tomorrow no matter how small it is if you're a mosquito no matter how small it is that could further the cause do something <coughs> don't just go away and think oh I was great yeah I was great oh, I was heavy I was really good, inspirational what can you do second thing is put your hand up if you can afford 20 pound a month to go to us to, to invest in a space. Come and see me after. <laughs> wow. That's it. Um, I'm gonna stick with the artist agenda. Essentially, I just want to keep on turning up and watching great theatre, um, great hip hop theatre. Theatre, I'm always enthused. So, be patient. Learn your craft. Um, if I can get a free ticket, great. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is about that, just just keep on making work. You know, I think people are going to leave here and keep on making work, and that's going to expand. <coughs> and that's you have to never forget that <coughs> the politics, the money, the bullshit make work. Um. Um. <laughs> that's what's the. Um that um, nothing's unattainable, and that's, I guess that's the vision for me. I think like nothing's unattainable in terms of everything that you see that might be a massive platform, massive piece, even like, like I was saying to Arnold Toy in that I never, I never really saw past triple bill 20 minute pieces because that's what people were imposing on me to create. And when she said, why don't you create a 60 minute piece? Why not? You know, these sort of things like, it's not unattainable for us to create anything that we want and we envisage. The other thing is I just like, I don't know if what I do is hip hop theatre. I just know I'm inspired by hip hop and I'm inspired by theatre. And like, just be authentically you and what you do. And I think um, that's all you can be. I think, and just keep creating. And speak to me if you want, on any buzz if you ever have any questions as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> Said a lot already. Um, no, I think that personally, um, something that I've learned this year is definitely if you're frustrated about things not happening or not feeling like you're in the right place or you feel like you're doing all the right things but nothing's happening, um, revisit that again and actually go, well, what am I doing to give back um, to the community and what am I being proactive about? Um, and what do I want to say and how am I going to make it happen? And like, you know, thanks to one opportunity um, that came from Breaking Convention, it's kind of been a snowball effect of like, actually, you know, if you think, well, people are going to come in and know who you are, you have to tell them who you are and you have to, to go <coughs> out and, and put something out there and create your own opportunity, which will then in turn create more opportunities. That's the lesson I've learned this year. Bullet points. There's something about leadership and investing in them. There's something about international strands and solutions. Definitely something about helping each other. Jane's example, Black Lives Matters. Also, um, Ken's analogy of the partner. Um, 
there's something definitely about being aware of the environment, also the political environment, and also let's wake up and do. Also want to say that I'm here, some of you haven't interacted with me or don't interact with me, but I'm here to give information. Um, if someone had said to me 22 years ago that I'll end up giving advice to the place about how they're gonna get more black Asian minority ethnics into the space, I'd have said, you're joking. Um, so it's been a journey for me as well. And it's not been one of those ones where wait for the funding, it's just about doing. And I guess I'm gonna end with a quote. And it's a quote that has stayed with me for 22 years. And it's simply this, in order to do the impossible, one must believe all things are possible. Mm. That's the end of the session. Mm. Big up yourself for coming. Keep the conversations going. I want to big up before we leave. I want to big up artists for artists, generally. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's that whole thing about the moaning and I want the sector to move forward, but it's another thing about getting up and actually moving the sector forward. And not just maybe doing a flash in the pan, but actually really working. We came here, was it two years ago or a year ago? I can't remember now. One year ago, and there was a lot of talk about why is there not more people in the room? Already that's happened. That's action. We're moving forward. So next time they put one of these on, maybe it'd be double, triple, who knows? But that's what I'm talking about. It's about action. Sometimes there's too much talk. Yeah? Mm. I'm also going to kind of come out of my chairing thing as well. It's really so important about bigging people up edifying people when you see someone doing something that's good in the sector let them know don't you know what sometimes people think i'm not gonna let you know because if i let you nah you already you already making us go backwards man yeah if someone's doing something good you don't have to be their friend to let them know you don't need to be their friend to let them know that they're doing good it moves the sector forward and there's sometimes we hide behind that like oh i'm not sure you're sure get out of that that's just semantics it's bullshit yeah you know what that was amazing yeah, it's really, really important. But going back to Lee um, and Joseph and Emily, fantastic work. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to speak. For you guys getting an opportunity to speak, yes, I know it was a massive subject. Maybe people are thinking, oh, what's going to come out of this? But you know what? We are here, like Dwayne said, we were here. This is already moving forward. Keep the vibe going. Tweet about it. Gram about it. Tell the world about it. And I'm sure we can move forward. I just want to thank the panel one more time, Dwayne Taylor. Thank you. Thank